Hello everyone. We're going to talk today about correlation. So we're in chapter 3. You should have your notes in front of you. And here we go. So correlation deals with two variables. Most, most of the time when we're talking about statistical studies, we're talking about multiple variables. And often what you're trying to look at or what you're studying is you're looking to see a relationship between one variable and another. So when one variable affects another, that variable will be referred to as the explanatory variable. The other is called the response variable. An explanatory variable attempts to explain what's happening. It attempts to explain the observed outcomes. That is typically the explanatory variable when your graphing goes on the x-axis. In a function or an equation, we think of the explanatory variable as the x variable. The response variable is the variable that measures the outcome of the study. So that's typically the y variable, and it would go on the y-axis. So in your notes, a scatter plot, the purpose of a scatter plot is to show the relationship between two quantitative variables. It only works for quantitative variables. It does not work for categorical. The x variable is called the explanatory, and the y variable is called the response. And you want to remember that when we're analyzing these multivariable relationships, we're looking for the overall pattern what pattern do we see connecting these two variables and then also we're looking for deviations from that pattern. A good way to try to see if there's a relationship between two quantitative variables is through the use of a scatter plot and you can see an example of one here. And as I mentioned the scatter plot we usually put the explanatory on the x and the response variable on the y. This scatter plot is a relationship or it's showing a relationship between the number of powerboat registrations in the state of Florida, measured in thousands, versus the number of manatees that are killed on a yearly basis. And you can see that there is a relationship. As the powerboat registrations increases, the number of manatees that are killed increases as well. Now, we've talked a lot about, in the first two chapters, about interpreting graphs, and we talked about cuss. For, for scatter plots, when we're interpreting a scatter plot, we want to look for the, these three things. Is there a pattern? So first, is it linear? Is there a parabola? Is it bell-shaped? What kind of pattern do we see? Secondly, we want to look for deviations from the pattern. Are there areas where the data conform less to the pattern? Are there clusters of data? What, what form does the scatter plot take? So these are things you want to pay attention to and you want to look for. And when you see them, you want to make sure that you write a complete sentence in context describing them because that's what we're going to be looking for on a test. You also want to think about the strength and the direction. The strength, does the data tightly conform or loosely conform? Are the dots on the scatter plot, are they tightly bunched or are they really spread out? And direction, if the scatter plot is linear, if it looks like it forms a straight line of some sort, we need to know is the data positively associated? In other words, as x gets bigger, y gets bigger also, or negatively associated? So as x gets bigger, y gets smaller. Now, correlation. Correlation is a measure of both the direction and the strength of the linear relationship between two quantitative variables. So first of all, you need to know what does correlation tell us. It tells us the direction and the strength. It only works for linear relationships. And it only works between two quantitative or numerical variables. So there's a limit on what correlation tells us, but what it does tell us is very important. A couple of facts about correlation. Both variables need to be quantitative. Because the data values are standardized, it doesn't matter what unit the variables are in. So whether they're in feet or inches, it doesn't matter. The value of r, and r is the correlation coefficient, is unitless. It's not measured in anything, it's just a number. Right? Some more facts. The value of r is always between negative 1 and 1. So you're never going to see r reported as 1.4. It's either between negative 1 and 1. The closer it gets to negative 1, the stronger negatively associated the th these two items are. The values closer to positive 1 reflect a strong positive linear association. Values close to 0 reflect no linear association. 
And also remember that correlation does not measure the strength of nonlinear relationships. If it's not a straight line, correlation won't tell you squat. So make sure that you're only looking at linear relationships. Correlation is blind to the relationship between explanatory and response. So in other words, you can flip the x and the y and put the y on the x-axis and the x on the y-axis, and it won't change the correlation at all. So correlation, it doesn't matter which one's x and which one's y. It's going to give you the same value. And finally, even though you may get an r value closer to negative 1 or 1, you cannot say that the explanatory variable causes the response variable. Right? You cannot say that. Correlation does not mean anything about causation. And we're going to talk about this in detail later. Here are a couple of some graphs that depict some of the different correlation coefficients. So you can see in the upper left corner, the dots are all scattered. That shows a correlation of 0. And then in the middle, you have a correlation of negative 0.3. That has a negative relationship. It's making a negative line, but they're still very scattered. So that's why it's not very strong, negative 0.3. On the right-hand side of the top, correlation of 0.5. It's getting a little more tightly grouped, and it definitely is forming a positive upward trend. Bottom left corner, they're getting even tightlier grouped, more tightly grouped, but going downward, so negative 0.7. Middle, bottom, very tightly compacted, going up, so 0.9. And then the one on the right-hand side, you can see, is practically a straight line in the negative direction, and that's a negative 0.99. So these are all six different examples of different correlations because you need to be able to get a feel for when I say something has a correlation of 0.5, what, is that, what might that look like? And so now that you've seen those pictures, you'll have an idea of what an R value of 0.5 looks like. So a typical example question that you might have to do on a quiz or a test is I might give you a set of data like this one. We have the age and the weight of a sample of 10 adults, and you want to create a scatter plot of the data below. So the first thing is, is there any relationship between the age and the weight of these adults? Looking at this, you want looking at this set of data, you want to figure out which one is the x value and which one's the y, which one's the explanatory. So does age explain weight or does weight explain age? Well, I think we can agree that age probably explains weight. The older you get, the more sedentary you get, the less muscle mass you have, so your weight starts getting bigger and bigger. So we're going to put the age on the x-axis and the weight on the y-axis. And you can see here's the first one. All right, the closer the points in the scatter plot are to a straight line, the stronger the relationship. So this makes a very nice straight line. Now, the correlation coefficient. It is a quantitative assessment of the strength and the direction of the linear relationship between bivariate, meaning two, quantitative, meaning numerical, data. We talked about this. This definition came earlier. Pearson sample correlation, that's just the name of it, is moves most often. The parameter is with a P, which is rho, but the statistic we generally use is R. So you want to pay attention to the statistic R. And there's the formula for R. Now, the good news is you're never going to be asked to use that formula to calculate R. R can be found on a calculator using a graphing calculator. You can find R very easily, and that's what you're going to be using. So you don't have to memorize this. You won't have to use it but it does give you an idea of how they go about calculating it. All right, it has to do with subtracting the means and adding them up and dividing by the standard deviation and how far things are apart from each other. So, sample test question. Speed limit and average number of accidents weekly. All right, we're going to graph this, we're going to calculate R, we're going to interpret R in context. If you put this into your calculator, and I will show you how to do this on the 84 tomorrow in class, you would be able to interpret R and figure out that there, in this case, as R, as the speed limit goes up, the number of accidents also goes up. So there is a strong positive linear relationship between speed limit and the average number of accidents per week. If you look at the scatter plot, you would see that. When you're interpreting R in context, you want to talk about those three things. Strength, this one's strong. Direction, it's positive. And then form, it's linear. And then in context, always in complete sentences, between speed limit and average number of accidents per week. A couple of properties. The legitimate values of R are between negative 1 and 1. Those are the only values possible. 
An R value of 0 means no correlation. An R value between 0.5 and negative 0.5 means a weak correlation. Between 0.5 and 0.8 in either the positive or the negative direction is a moderate correlation. And then anything above 0.8 up to 1 we would say is a strong correlation. So you need to know how to define the strength and those are the parameters you want to write down. Now, I want you to remember, correlation does not imply causation. Repeat after me, correlation does not imply causation. Correlation does not imply causation. It's something you have to make sure that you are aware of and that you remember. You should come into the room chanting that tomorrow. Correlation does not imply causation. That's all, folks.